If you've seen the harrowing Brie Larson film Room, Netflix's new German limited series Dear Child may seem familiar at first, but then it switches gears to be something completely new. So is it worth the binge? A mysterious woman's escape from her harrowing captivity points investigators towards the dark truth behind an unsolved disappearance 13 years earlier. So this is a six-episode limited series that starts out with us seeing this woman and two young kids in sort of a closed-off and sketchy-looking room. We quickly learn that they're being held captive, and when the woman is able to make an escape, the investigation into why she was taken and by whom gets underway. Now, this is a very dark premise to it. And while there is some very disturbing imagery and content, there's also a massive hint at redemption, acceptance, and moving on. The investigation is tense, and it's also mysterious, and I was riveted the entire way through thanks to the way the information is revealed and the story beats build on one another. When the woman escapes her captor, a detective from another city gets word that it could involve a missing persons case that he's been working on for 13 years. And this also draws in the parents of the missing person, intertwining all the characters at various points to create aggravating interactions as well as heartbreaking scenarios. As the story progresses, there are several possible suspects that we encounter. Now, I was wrong several times, but I was also able to guess correctly. But really, while the reveal of the perp is important, it's ultimately not the main focus of the narrative. And all throughout this, the actors effectively channel the frustration and devastation of the events. We see how the parents work through information, being tentatively excited at the discovery of this woman who fits a description. The detective, having been engulfed for over a decade on a case he hadn't been able to solve, now also has to confront and interact with the parents that he supposedly let down all these years. There's also a current detective working the woman's case, searching for the abductor, and she's dealing with her own set of obsession, not able to move past actions or mistakes and then reeling from certain decisions. We get to see in small glimpses how this affects her well beyond the job, which I think is important in humanizing her and her emotions, because otherwise she's cold, driven, almost lacking emotions other than just ferocity to solve the case. And then in what is the most heartbreaking sequences, we watch the abducted woman and the children try to become accustomed to the outside world. Each performance is quietly devastating, supported by silent actions that highlight a horrendous and manipulative experience. And like I mentioned, the crux of the story isn't so much the abductor and the crimes, but watching all of the characters to see if, how, and when they can move beyond their past or even their current present into a space of acceptance and eventual healing. Now, if you're looking for a storybook ending where everything's hunky-dory and all are happy, it's not really the ending we get. I will say that this conclusion is very satisfying, especially after being taken on just this captivating emotional roller coaster of the episodes. The story, it's masterfully told, adding misdirection in small doses to keep the mystery engaging, but also never losing sight of the characters and their journeys. The human side of the story is thankfully never lost, despite traumatic imagery and insinuation. Now, the pacing for the series is driving and intense, but not rushed. There are even points when it's slower storytelling, but there's still this urgency that's building, allowing the narrative to drive up our heartbeat as each encounter incurs. There are some sequences when a nurse is interacting with one of the kids, and these are typically quieter scenes. Not much dialogue or even action, just looks of emotion and the characters' presence. Now, without saying anything, huge amounts of context are relayed, drawing us into the scene and being able to empathize with the characters. There are also some emotionally explosive moments as we watch the parents navigate their thoughts and feelings. It's not quite distressing, but there is a palpable element to what we're shown, creating relatable actions brought about by overwhelming emotions. Now, I love the cinematography and the coloring that's utilized in the final product. There's an underlying coldness to almost all of the imagery. A bluish hue just creates a foreboding tone, and that's sometimes offset by cold fluorescent lighting, or then even some harsh warm sunlight. Now, the contrast with the sun is awesome as it fights against the tone of a scene. It's using the warmth to soften an interaction, but never quite removing the unease that just permeates the story. And the way our characters are filmed, as well as the landscapes and the settings, it helps to create immersive environments and sometimes intimate viewpoints. Many times the camera will focus on a subject's head and shoulders, looking down on them, creating this sense of exerted power over the character. I mean, it's making them appear weak or subservient. Now, it's a subtle way to reinforce the idea of the control that the abductor had. 
There are also a few beautiful top-down shots that are not overused, but the unique perspective changes the dynamic of a scene to make it larger in scope and scale, or even to showcase a brutality that we wouldn't fully see if it was shot from another angle. Now, I think there are a few moments that seem like they're dropped quickly or become unimportant too fast, like an arc dealing with the nurse. But because this really is less about the reveal of the perpetrator and more about moving on or beyond experiences, this is something that didn't bother me as much. I mean, I think there are also some big plot conveniences that allow the abductor to create movements that aren't fully realistic, but we can infer their plausibility. And for me, it just didn't harm the intensity or the dread of the storytelling. Some plot protection was noticeable, but not detrimental to the enjoyment. So overall, Dear Child is a riveting limited series with engrossing characters and a captivating storyline. The themes of acceptance and moving on are expertly conveyed and examined, taking distressing story content and using it to highlight emotional and psychological growth that's not always easy or pretty, but necessary for survival. The mystery is engaging with an urgency to the storytelling that brings about an adrenaline rush that's helped along by dynamic and explosive character interactions. There is some plot protection at work to help the story along, but it's not too overt to ruin the watching experience. This is a haunting and disquieting series that's capped off with a climax worthy of the ride. There's no sex or nudity, a lot of profanity and violence, including sexual assault and abuse. I give Dear Child four and a half out of five couches. This was harrowing, but it was awesome. Well, that's a series that has stuck with you long after watching. Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching.